Hi, my name is Angelica Hutchison, and this project is for Mr. Bernard's class, Honors Econ and Government. The career that I have chosen is a medical examiner, and basically, a medical examiner are usually doctors who use a variety of science in order to gather data from autopsies to determine the most probable cause of death. In many cases, Medical examiners work to find out what killed a person under unexpected or criminally suspicious circumstances. This job requires a bachelor's degree in a natural science field followed by a MD degree. Though it's important to note that some jurisdictions don't require professional medical training for these examiners. After you receive an MD, then you then enroll in a residency program. Medical school graduates must complete their residency in anatomic and forensic pathology in order to become a medical examiner. Residency programs provide paid training and typically last four years. Pa uh, forensic pathology residents gain practical experience by participating in autopsies and investigations. Followed by residency program, you must complete a fellowship. Um, fellow, fellow works on a forensic team at the medical examiner or coroner office following the completion of residency. Uh, you Medical examiners participate in crime scene investigations and they testify to the facts of the evidence in the courtroom. They test body fluids and assist with autopsies. And over a year of that course, resident trainees perform up to 300, tra 300 autopsies while under the supervision of a certified forensic pathologist. And after you complete a fellowship, then you receive your license and certification. This step can be done after graduating from medical school or during the course of a residency program. After you get your license and certification, then you have the opportunities of career advancement, which means you could possibly become a chief medical examiner and the higher your responsibilities are, the more you get paid. And I think that that is amazing. Okay. Can you provide the name of the educational institution, either a two year or four year college or university? And how much is the tuition for all years of schooling? Are you going to need further schooling for your career path? And if so, what's the name of the institution if different and tuition for that advanced degree. How much more are you going to be paid as a result of attaining the advanced degree compared to not attending school at all? Well, the university that I have chosen is Clark Atlanta University, which is a four-year college. The tuition to attend the university is about $33,596 because this fee is comprised of 19000 682 for tuition, 10,262 for room and board, 2,000 for books and supplies, and $1,652 for other fees. I am also going to need to further my schooling because in order to become a medical examiner, you also have to go to medical school, and the medical school that I have chosen is Morehouse School of Medicine. And Morehouse School of Medicine is approximately 43,000 805 for in-state tuition. Now, according to ForensicScienceCareer.net, it stated that the average salary in the state of Georgia medical examiners can make $209,380 annually. Medical examiners earn more than eight times as much per year than the average high school graduate. I'm sure you created a household budget. 
How much do you make annually? I make uh two hundred and nine thousand three hundred and eighty dollars annually. Okay. Awesome. I'm sure you found a place to live. So yeah. can you expound on where and how much is rent or mortgage? And include your utilities and your monthly food. Well here I have my household budget and the place I decided decided to stay is downtown Atlanta and I decided to own my own home and my mortgage would be about eight hundred dollars. My electricity would be one hundred and twenty dollars. My gas would be one hundred and fifty dollars. My cell phone would be about one hundred dollars. My groceries would be three hundred and fifty dollars. My car payment would be about four hundred dollars. Auto expenses would be two hundred dollars. Student loans, $1,000. Credit cards, $100. Auto insurance, $150. Personal care, $600. And my entertainment would be $250. Okay. Um, let's talk about cars. All right. How much is your monthly payment? Of course, what type of car? And let's shop for insurance. So we need to talk about two types of automobile insurance. And I'd like you to explain the costs associated with the different types of insurance, including the deductibles, premiums, and shared liability. Well, the car that I have chosen is a 2015 Dodge Challenger. It's a brand new car. My monthly payment would be about $500 a month. My two automobile insurance is comprehensive and liability liability insurance is the most important coverage and it requires it is required in most states like if you cause an accident hurt someone or damage someone's property it can pay for the covered damages and to defend you if a lawsuit results now comprehensive insurance is a coverage that helps you pay for damages that your vehicle it helps you i'm sorry it helps pay for dam damages to your vehicle that is not caused by a collision. For example, theft, vandalism, if you hit an animal, or, or storms and certain natural disasters. Okay. And lastly, we're going to talk about credit worthiness. Um, how does that impact your ability for a house or a car loan? And I'm sure you've researched credit cards. So I'd like for you to identify at least two different types of credit cards and provide the names of them and include the interest rates and annual fees. To have credit worth basically means to have a satisfactory credit rating. If you have bad credit, then you would have to have a co-signer because you don't have a worthy credit rating and you cannot buy a house or a car. You can't buy anything because you have bad credit. The credit extended as an absolute value that should meet the real needs of a borrower. Now, I also researched two credit cards, and the credit cards that I researched were American Express and USAA. American Express is a private company because they did not provide this to everyone. It is beneficial to the card members, for example, Sky miles and access to the sky lounges and airports. It is also accepted internationally. The annual fee is four hundred and fifty a year, and the interest rate is thirteen point nine. Now USAA is a different. It's it's a little bit different because it's an insurance company and a credit union. They issue cards to the members. The interest rate is 11.9, however, there is no annual fee for USAA. Awesome. Well, it seems like you have everything covered. You spoke about your career, you've identified the skills that are required to be successful, and then you went into detail about the specific colleges and what the tuition would be required, the advanced degree, you have a household budget. You know where you're going to live with your utilities and your monthly expenses. You know about your car, your insurance, and your creditworthiness. I think you're on the right track, and I'm very proud of you. Thank you. You're welcome.